well, different formulas for updating the method when we get new data points. We get a new measured value. We compare that one to what we have <coughs> forecasted. And forecasting will both consider the trend and also the season. And when we get a new data point, we will have to update the value of the series, which is the end point of the line, the gradient, how much we expect to increase from one period to another, or eventually decrease if the trend is going downwards. And also, we have to adjust the seasonal factor, the C value here. And to make a forecast, we use this uh, uh, formula here, make a forecast for a certain number of periods into the future. Start at the base, which is the S value, and add the gradient for the given number of periods into the future and adjust by multiplying by the current seasonal factor. The seasonal factor of the same period that you are making a forecast for. So now we, have, we know about all these uh, formulas, but to get started we need some initial values. We need to know what are the S values the S value, the G value, and all the C values, because you will have one seasonal factor for each period in what the, the, the books call the full season, which usually is the full year. And to get started, we, we need some uh, to go through the initialization procedure. And the first point is to calculate the sample mean for each season. Each season is, the, in this case, the full year. And we assume that we have two full seasons, two years of data to get started here. It is possible to use only one year. It is also possible to include by three years. But the, the normal thing here is to start by two full seasons. If you have more seasons of uh, more, more data, you still should use two seasons, but then you can run the model for one more season to update uh, according to the formulas we have, uh, we have just seen here. So let's now see that we have, let's assume that we have uh, four seasons. We have the winter, spring, summer, uh, and autumn in each year, each of the two years. So we assume that we start here. Uh, maybe we should make another figure. <coughs> and we have a trend line. And now at this point, which we can call zero. This is today. And we have one full year, which stops here. So we have one, let's assume we start here. Then we have a high season and a low season. And this will be similar. for all these uh, years. Let's say, assume we have uh, a figure looking more like this. So we have four seasons and we have one full season, maybe the sum one uh, high season, maybe the summer, one low season, maybe the, the winter. And to find initial values, first we want to identify the slope of the trend line. The slope of the trend line, then we should find the average, the sample mean for each full season, each year. So we start by identifying what we call the V1 and the V2, which is defined to be 1 divided by n 
and n is the number of periods in one season when you have four seasons winter spring summer and uh, and autumn the n value is 4 if you are talking about month the n value is 12 and the average will then be for the first year first season the sum when you start on minus 2n plus 1 and go up to minus n. This is the well, notations here, which means if you are today, it's period number 0, then we start with minus 2n minus plus 1, which is minus 8 plus 1, minus 7, which means that the first period of data is period minus 7. And up to minus 4. Uh, the second full season, second year, will then start on minus n plus 1 and up to 0. Minus 3, minus 1 and 0. These are now the eight data points we have in this particular example. So we will find the average of the demand for each full season, which will, will be the midpoint of the line here and the midpoint of the line here. And the difference between these two points will then be the initial slope of the trend line. So when we know these averages, we can easily define the gradient of period number zero, the current value of the gradient should be the difference of the V2 and the V1, difference of these two points, and divided by the number of periods. Not divided by two, but divided by n. Because this will be the gradient from one period to the next. This is the initial value of g, the initial value of the gradient. And when we know the initial value of the gradient, it's also very easy to find the s value, this value, the current value of s, by putting s0 to be this point, the average in the second zero, uh, second second uh, full season, and continue from this point to the end point, today's date. Which means that we use v2 as the starting point and continue the g zero, which is the gradient of the line, to this point. And we know in this case v2 will be at here, between, when we use 0, 1, 2, and 3 as the point, the midpoint will be at point number 1.5. So, g0 multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. Will be continue with the same gradient until we meet the today's date here. And then we also need to find the values of the seasonal factors. To get these factors we need to update or to get initial values for all the C's, which says that we need to find every period from minus 7 to 0 here. And uh, the C for each period can be found by taking the demand for that particular period 
and divide by the V, which is the average for each full season, for each full year, we need to use the same year as the period are in. So for the first four period here, we should use V1. For the second four periods, we should use V2. And this means that we use the VI denotation here. And we have to subtract the value of n plus 1 divided by 2. multiplied by the value of j, where the, um, not multiplied, but minus, of course, minus, where j is the number of the period in the season. So we have two index values. The, the i value will denote the year and the j value will denote the period which periods are period are we in period 1 2 3 4 or minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 and 0 will be uh, will similar because it denotes which period uh, winter uh, spring fall, uh, summer and, and and fall and the V will be the average of the current year. Yep. Yeah. This is minus G, but the there should be, yeah, you're right, that, thank you. So we also need to multiply by the gradient, the, the current value of the gradient, the value we have found here. So this is the, the full formula now for, for the seasonal factor. Take the demand for that particular series, take the average of the year this demand is in, minus this uh, n plus 1 divided by 2 minus j and multiply by the gradient. This will give us the seasonal factor for that particular season. But again, we now have eight seasonal factors in our small example, and we need to find one value for each season, which means that we need to take the, the average. So, the, what we now can call the C, what the book says, minus n plus 1, which uh, I think we can we can use the well the numbers in uh, uh, the notations in the book are more mathematically correct, but we can now use that we want to find the seasonal factor for period one, two, three, and four, which is based on the seasonal factors for minus seven, minus six, minus five, and four, minus four, and minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. So to get the seasonal factor for period one. We take the seasonal factor for period minus 7 and add the seasonal factor for period minus 3 and divide by 2. Take the average of the value for this period and the value for this period. <coughs> and of course do the similar for period 2, 3 and 4, but use the similar seasons in the historical data here. But what we also need to do is to what we, what we call and normalize this uh, seasonal factor and to normalize them we can use the formula here because when you add these seasonal factors together you might not get exactly the value of 4 which is the number of seasons you might get 3.9 or 4.1 or because there are some uh, there will be some inaccuracy here. So to, to normalize, to get the exact value of the seasonal factor, you should normalize, and then you can say that the C of J should be equal to the C 
uh, well the old value of c of j what you can find by this formula here so let's now call it j mark to, to say that you are changing actually the same value c j divided by the sum of all the c's and multiply this by n because this value well if you're lucky this value is exactly 4 or exactly equal to the number of periods then it can be shortened directly otherwise it needs to be adjusted slightly but okay we will it's easier to show this on an example and uh, I will now go through one example on this Winters method uh, you have example 28 in the textbook which I will, will not present but you should read it yourself but I will show a solution for problem 235 which is defined on page 89 and the data is actually shown on page 84 um, if we read the text we see that we should use the data from 1991 and 92 which is the two last years in in the data set determine initial values of the intercept the slope and the seasonal factors as we have had presented formulas for and then assume that we observe a demand for the first quarter of 93 which is 18 and use values given for the smoothing constant and update the estimates of the series the slope and the seasonal factors by including the new value which is 18 in 1993 and on problem C what are the forecasts made at the end of the first quarter for the remaining three quarters of 93 so this is now the three sub questions we should uh, try to, to answer and we are given in page 84 we are given a table which actually contains three years but we should only use the last two 1991 and 1992 which is the sale of a popular uh, popular brand of tennis shoe which has a given demand and tennis <coughs> shoes are well a typical seasonal product according to uh, according to, to this uh, data at least it sold more in mostly in the third quarter not so much in the in the first quarter so we can clearly see that there are seasonal differences on on this particular product so now we should try to solve this one using winters method and uh, first we need to find initial values by using the formulas we have here and then we should try to make a forecast and update the forecast when we get new data for the first uh, first period in 1993 <coughs> so okay first point try to find initial values initial values for v, uh, uh, for the, the slope which is the first we need to calculate is found by taking the average of each full year each full season so the average for the first year 1991 will be 16 plus 32 plus 71 plus 62 and divide by 4 the average of all the four seasons in 1991 which is 45.25 the v2 will now be the average of the next full season the next year of the data set which is 1992 and the average here is 14 plus 45 plus 84 plus 47 divided by 4 which gives us 
an average of 47.50. And when we have these two averages, we can see that while well, we have an increasing line, not so much, but we, we have a small trend from first year to the second year, 45, 25, and up to 47.50. So the initial value of G, G0, will be 47.50 minus 45.25 divided by the number of periods, which is 4. This gives us a G0 value of 0 0.56. Now we know how much this trend line is increasing from one period to the next according to the two years we are using for the data, uh, for, for initializing the, the data here. And when we know about uh, of course, when we know this, uh, we can uh, find also the value of S and the value of uh, S0 will be, we remember, V2, which is now 47.50. And we also remember that we should try to get found the midpoint here and the midpoint there. And we should now continue this line until today's date here. So we should continue from this point, V2, the midpoint in the second season, and we should continue by using the gradient. Gradient is 0 0.56, and we need to now multiply by the difference from this point to this point, and I can see that I said something wrong in by presenting this value because I said we should multiply by n plus 1 divided by 2 but the correct is n minus 1 divided by 2. n minus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3 and we are ending up at point 48.34. <coughs> which means we are continuing this line and since we have the periods 0, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3 the midpoint will be at minus 1.5 so we are multiplying by 1.5 or 3 divided by 2 with the gradient to get exactly at this point which is the value of the series the S0 for the trend line um, what is a bit more, well, at least time consuming, not more difficult, but we need now to update the, ser the, the seasonal factors and then we need the values for all the eight seasons in the history. So we, at least we will, will start and we remember the general formula, the C, the C for period T is equal to d of t divided by v i minus and here we should have n plus 1 divided by 2 and we should use I think I've been a bit inaccurate because we should use now, of course, plus. We should have n plus 1 divided by 2 plus j, so I'm not sure what I've been doing with now creating my notes. But here, mm. 
Now the mistake is here, so you should, I should have minus one. That should be correct. So it was correct the first time. And plus one divided by two and minus j. And multiplying by the gradient. This is now the general formula here. So let's try to find the value of c minus 7, which is the first one. c minus 7 will be the value of the demand in period minus 7, which is 16, divided by the v of i, which is the average in that particular year, 45.25. minus n plus 1 is 5 divided by 2 and minus j where j is the value of the period or the number of the period and since we now are talking about period 1 we should now subtract 1 here and multiply by the value of g0, which is 0 0.56. <coughs> this is the v of i, which is the average of the current year, and this is the number of the current period. So when we are talking about period 1, we should subtract 1 here, and period 2, we should subtract 2, and so on. So that now the seasonal factor for period minus 7 will be a total of 0 0.36 which means that in period minus 7 the sales was 36% 30, of the what we should expect according to the trend line and similar if we continue c of minus 6 which is the second period in the first full year of the historical data, then we had a sales of 32. We should divide by still the average of the current year is 45.25 minus n plus 1 divided by 2 is still 5 divided by 2, but now we should subtract minus 2 because we are talking about the second period in the full season and multiply by the gradient, 0 0.56, which gives us a seasonal factor of, min uh, of 0 0.71. And we can continue for minus 5, c of minus 5, we have a new value of the demand. In this case, we have a value which is 71. The average or the v value will be the same, <coughs> minus 5 divided by 2 will be the same, but now we have to subtract 3 here, because we are in the third period multiply by the gradient and we get a seasonal factor here which is 1.56 and similar for minus 4 c of minus 4 then we have a new value which now will be 62 in the the sales of the period minus 4 in the history and all the other values will be the same except this one which now will be minus, uh, you have to subtract 4 from this 5 divided by 2. And we end up with a seasonal factor for a period no, uh, which is minus, minus 4, which is uh, now 1.35. And continuing with period minus 3, which is the first period of the second year in the data, then we have c minus 3, which is a value of 14, 
And now we have to divide by not 45.25, but 47.50, which is the average for that particular year. Minus 5 divided by 2, and minus 1, because now we are back to the first period in the full season. And multiply by 0 0.56, which is the same value, uh, same gradient, which is similar. It's already fun. So period minus 3 will now have seasonal factor of 0 0.30. Period minus 2 will be similar. We have a demand of 45, so we will have to exchange that one and that one in this formula. Put in the new demand here and adjust according to the current period. Gives us a value of 0 0.95. C minus 1 and C0 will be found the sim same way. Use the current demand and adjust with the correct period in this formula here. So C minus 1 will be 1.76 and C0 will be 0 0.97. So now we have eight seasonal factors, but we have to reduce them to four. So let's try to rem remember this. Uh, values here or maybe we should just remove the calculations and put the exact values here because we might need them 48.34 Let's now try to calculate the C values for period 1, 2, 3, and 4 when we have the historical data from period minus 7 up to 0. So C1 will be the average of 0 0.36 and 0 0.30. The two uh, seasonal factors for the same period of the year. So the average here will be 0 0.33. C2 will now be the average of the period, zero, uh, second period, 0 0.71 and 0 0.95. The average here will be 0 0.83. The C3 will be average of 156 and 176, then the average should be 166. And C4 will now be the average of 135 and 097 is this uh, a total of 1.16. And if we add these four seasonal factors together, we get 3.98 which is not exactly 4. It's not far away. So using these factors will give us a, well, a quite uh, good result. Uh, and there are, of course, also uncertainties involved. So, well, but to, be, to get the exact correct value, we should also, what we call, normalize these seasonal factors. And then to find a norming factor, call that NF, norming factor, we should divide N by this number 398 and we get a value of 1.005 and adding each of these four values by the norming factor we will get uh, approximately the same values we might need to adjust this one and this one up to 7 here, so 167 and one six, uh, 117. By adding by the norming factor here. Sometimes you get a higher value. In this case, it, the difference was, uh, was so small, so we didn't need to do much adjustment on the seasonal factors, but sometimes you can get 
well, values which is more significant than in this case. But now we have found the initial values which makes us, makes us uh, available to make a forecast because we have the initial value of the gradient, we have the initial value of the series, and we have initial values of all the four seasonal factors. So now to make a forecast, we can use the use the, the formula for forecasting and adjust by the seasonal factor for the period we are making a forecast for. <coughs> So, make a forecast for period number one, then f from, from zero and up to one, well, okay, we can just use one there. Forecast for period number one will be the s zero plus, and since we now are only forecasting one period ahead, then the tau value will be 1, so we don't need to include that, but S0 plus G0, and multiplied by the seasonal factor for period 1, which is 0 0.33. Remember, this is important. Use the correct seasonal factor for the season you are going to make a forecast for. This will be 48.34. This value plus 0 0.56 and multiplied by 0 0.33. A forecast which tells us that we expect to sell 16.14 in the first quarter of 1994. Okay, we are not done yet because we have made a forecast, but uh, what is now happening is that in the first uh, quarter of 1994, we get a new data point. So the D01 will be 18. We had a forecast of 16.14, we actually sell 18, which is higher than the forecast. So, we then have this situation that we have found the trend line, we had some... Uh, we had some seasonal differences here, and we assume that the trend will continue and that we should have a low season here. So the forecast was actually here, but the actual sales was up here. We sold 18 instead of 16.14. This means we need to adjust the series because now the end point here, well, the, the, the trend is actually increasing more than we expected. So we need to adjust the values of the series, the gradient, and also maybe adjust the seasonal factor for January here. And we have seen formulas for this. We have found formulas for updating these three parameters, the S, the G, and the C. Um, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll not be able to finalize this in two minutes, so we'll take a break now, and I continue with this example in the next hour, and then also we should uh, start on uh, looking at chapter 3 about aggregate planning. But we take a break now and start again 11.15.